Hello friends, welcome to Insert Second Initiative. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the Indian economy a review. It is presented by our finance minister Nirmala Sitaraman. Actually, this year we don't have any economic survey because this year government is not presenting the full budget. That is the reason. Rather than introducing the economic survey, government introduced the Indian economy a review. Actually, this document is all about two volumes. Of course, we will discuss about further information regarding this particular thing. Now, first, we try to go through the video components. In this, we are going to discuss about why it is in news. So, that is this the Indian economy a review, why it is in news. Then, what you know, like uh, this document is talking about economic growth, what are the challenges involved in the Indian economy, then what our chief economic advisor is proposing. So, how India, Indian economy was able to quickly recover. So, what are the initiatives taken by government of India and fragility to stability and strength. That means from the very, you know, like uh, fragile status to how we, how the Indian economy been strengthened, what kind of in initiative taken by government of India. And in this video ending, we will discuss about some of the initiatives from government of India in the area of education and some other, some other areas. Okay. First, we will try to go through the some of the key highlights of this Indian economy overview. First, I will try to help you out the key, key, you know, like key issues or key, you know, like highlights. First one, financial year, the, that means the coming 2024, it is in marks, that means here 24 means 23-24. It is going to be the successive year of 7 percentage or more. So, when the entire global economy is struggling to go for more than 3 percentage in this last year, now Indian economy is easily going more than 7 percentage. This is the first takeaway. Next, regarding the growth, regarding the growth, now the global chains are, you know, like facing a lot of issues, especially due to red, due to, you know, like war conditions at Red Sea. In this context, so the globalization, nowadays the world is deglobalizing. Even though the world is deglobalizing, we, of course, our Indian economy also should be prepared for that. That is the reason Indian economy is going to encourage onshoring, that means production within India as well as the friend shoring of production. Friend shoring means production in our friendly nations where you know like uh, uh, less obstacles are there for the production of goods. Next, India is committing, India is commitment to the steady economic growth by investing, by investing in various sectors along with the, along with the climate change adaptation and building resilience and mitigating emissions. So, here we would like to mention that we are going to maintain balance between the economic growth and uh, you know like climate action. Tell me students, by which year India is uh, you know like targeted that, by which year India targeted that they would like to achieve the net carbon zero, okay, net carbon zero level by which year they would like to achieve. Next the public sector capital investment, investment in the public sector, it increased almost all in last 10 year, okay, we will discuss about this a bit later. The financial sector is healthy and the non-food credit that means credit given to some other productive sectors that has been increased and greater financial inclusion. Financial inclusion means uh, taking vulnerable sections, taking disadvantaged sections into financial growth and much lower unemployment compared to last 10 years and the government effective COVID management, COVID management and the economic stimulus measures, they given a great success to economy and various structural reforms since 2014. It also strengthened the macroeconomic fundamentals of the economy. Next, key highlights to document 2. So, here the reforms which undertaken by the government, it strengthened the financial sector and it also helped cleaning up the balance sheet of the banks. That means, government is saying that non-performing assets of government, I mean public sector banks, okay, these are decreased. Then, domestic market being unified through GST. After GST is introduced, more economic efficiency increased and production at larger scale incentivized and reduced the logistic cost as well. Tell me students, through which constitutional amendment, through which constitutional amendment we introduce the GST. Next, to improve the ease of doing business, government introduced various incentives, various incentives. It decriminalized some of the minor, some of the minor, minor offenses in the company act and government also tried to create an ecosystem to
to encourage startups startups okay next now next people of india they are not only the benefit of government programs even during the last 9 years the people of india also they are becoming drivers of the economic growth okay so what through government programs government welfare programs we are giving money to them and they are also becoming part of the part of the economic growth drivers and india for the next 25 years we recently the 75th independence day celebrated couple of years back azadi ka amrit mahotsav and we are aiming towards the amrit kal and uh, whatever the challenges especially challenges to growth and challenges to inclusive development we are taking these as a stepping stones rather than obstacles all inclusive welfare programs they are contributing that means welfare programs they are contributing the increased level of consumption base so the people purchasing power is increased despite the challenges in the global health and variability in climate conditions the agriculture sector in india still it demonstrated remarkable tenacity you know that during the covid times the agriculture sector saved indian economy in fact especially there was a very negative growth in the industrial sector as well as the tertiary sector india's digital public infrastructure spending on digital public infrastructure government document is saying that previously the cost of the cost of conducting verification on the e kyc details it used to be 1000 rupees now it reduced to only just 5 rupees and this spending on digital public infrastructure it enhanced paperless and it facilitated cashless digital access to various public and private services this is about the e governance next improved internet connectivity improved internet connectivity also propelled e commerce business e commerce market in india this is about e commerce e commerce markets and india became third largest fintech economy that means using of technology in finance third largest fintech economy after us and uk next india forms ibc insolvency and bankruptcy code resolution through this companies which are experiencing the bankruptcy their process is getting done very quickly so that they are coming out of the debt they are cleaning up the balance sheet and they are restarting their business activity so insolvency and bankruptcy insolvency it followed with the bankruptcy bankruptcy is the official declaration of the liquidation of the company okay if a company unable to pay the debt that is known as insolvency the legal process followed after insolvency is bankruptcy india became the fourth largest stock market okay fourth largest stock market especially it recently it overtook the hong kong it is reflecting the it reflecting the great ipo activity initial public offer activity in the indian stock market and the indian concept of welfare it transferred it transferred many people and this is going to be the the welfare programs in india are going to be the long term oriented and they are they are the empowerment oriented next regarding the carbon stock even though historically developed countries they contributed a lot to the carbon in spite of that india is trying its best to reduce its carbon emissions even our prime minister also called for a program known as life okay tell me students what is the what is the main motto of this program life okay and of course india led this international solar alliance international solar alliance even the one sun one world one grid this program also launched by india next msmes they are becoming the most increasingly vibrant and dynamic due to the supportive measures implemented by the government and nari shakti is encouraged a lot in last 10 years pm jandan yojana they been increased and the proportion of women having the bank accounts increased from 53 percentage to 78.6 percentage of women now in india they are having the bank accounts and the female labor force participation rate increased from that means percentage of female they are participating in the labor force increased from 23.3 percentage to okay so it increased around 37 percentage 37 percentage next about skill india mission startup and stand up mission and the grass enrollment ratio in the secondary education it doubled almost all it increased from 24.5 percentage to 58.2 percentage and the female grass enrollment ratio in higher education almost all four times 6.7 percentage to 27.9 percentage 
okay so these are some of the key highlights of this document now so th this details also be discussed already then regarding the highest number of ipos india became a fourth largest stock markets we discussed and this review the indian economy review document this document was written by v ananta nageshwaran and it talks about the india's economy for last 10 years actually it is not economic survey it is about a summary document reflecting the indian economy for last 10 years this included two chapters like i mentioned earlier first chapter it provided overview of the past present and future of the indian economy this is a brief overview and the second chapter gives given detailed look at the government policies progress and various parameters okay next the economic growth this document is projecting that india's economic growth is expected to be at or more than 7 percentage for the financial year 2024 and financial year 2024 and beyond financial year 2025 is also going to be more than 7 percentage if that is the condition if that is the case then india's economic growth is going to be the more than 7 percentage for last 4 years this year previous 2 years and next year so since post post pandemic so post pandemic india is one of the very few countries which registered more than 7 percentage of the growth at the moment world is struggling to get even 2 percentage of the growth and this is a trend this is a pattern of investment in the investment in the public sector okay what kind of investments the capital expenditure capital investment in the public sector capital expenditure grants and resources of public enterprises here almost a 10 lakh crores 10 lakh crores of the money invested in the capital as a capital expenditure this is about bank credit to infrastructure the bank credit almost are increased significantly now it is touching near 12 lakh crores that means the credit flow from the banks to infrastructure is increasing that means obviously economic activity also will be increased because infrastructure is directly proportion to economic activity challenges facing the indian economy few challenges such as global supply chains now they are under stress best example red sea crisis and the rise of artificial intelligence it may pose challenge for service as well as employment energy transition challenge because we have to shift from the fossil towards the towards the you know like renewable energy and of course we also uh, we also trying hard to achieve our targets which mentioned in the cop 26 okay panchamrit targets mentioned by our indian prime minister in cop 26 hyper globalization the hyper globalization in manufacturing it is ending now the deglobalization is going on our indian economy is ready for this and uh, of course indian economy as a part of getting ready to deglobalization we are encouraging the onshoring that means manufacturing within india as well as friend shoring of production that means uh, if any goods which supposed to be produced in india they may be encouraged to produce in other countries if they are unable to produce in india next this document proposing lower logistical costs investment investing in the product quality and maintaining and expanding the market share of india in its advantaged markets so these are these are the initiatives proposing this document green initiatives already we discussed some of the green initiatives implemented by government of india so in this document is saying that after covid pandemic especially the especially the government efficient way of managing covid pandemic as well as the vaccination record record vaccination helped indian economy to recover to recover very quickly from the covid pandemic even government is mentioning that the management of the crude oil supply whenever the crude oil is available at less cost okay government of india bought them those kind of initiatives also help to us according to this document and from fragility to stability how we transformed from stability from fragility to stability due to these initiatives like now inflation is under control fiscal deficit is getting lower and current account deficit is just above only 1 percentage of the gdp and the foreign exchange reserves they are enough for the next 11 months of imports so by looking at these parameters we can say that indian economy moved from fragility towards stability and some of the initiatives of government of india regarding the affordable and wholesome health government provided aishman bharat cards and around 1.6 lakh primary health facilities they are upgraded to 
Ayushman Arogya Mandir and around 17.4 crore patients they available they availed e sanjeevani opd services around 10000 jan aushadhi kendras the main purpose of the jan aushadhi kendras is providing affordable medicine 16% decline in tb incidents between 2015 to 2020 and with around 18 percentage reduction in the mortality death due to tb tb is a disease which affect our lungs and regarding the education national education policy introduced in 2010 and the national curriculum framework for foundation strategy this is mainly to to target the learning teaching material and textbooks so they been modified and they were, they were relaunched in 2023 and parak performance assessment review and analysis of knowledge for holistic development this is the regarding the improving the norms and implementing activities related to student assessment okay improving the student assessment performance so that students uh, standards can be assessed very regularly and around pm shri schools these are the model schools around 14500 schools they are going to be set up according to national education policy and the nipun bharat mission it is for it is for the universal acquisition of the foundational literacy and numeracy by 2026 that means achieving a basic uh, literacy and basic numeracy by 2026 2027 expansion of digital learning through swayam prabha and moocs m w o c s by using this initiative government of india try to expand the digital learning so these are the some of the initiatives mentioned in this document yesterday's video mcq in india which one of the following is responsible for maintaining price stability by controlling the inflation who is responsible reserve bank of india is responsible okay now as we reach to the end of this video in this particular video we discussed about brief highlights regarding the indian economy a review and we also discussed about some of the government initiatives which mentioned in this particular document so this is the overview regarding the indian economy a review i hope this video added some value to your preparation thanks for watching this video have a great day jai hind